Mental health and guardianships. The month of May has now become known as Mental Awareness Month. In almost all states, I think federally it's recognized, more and more states are coming online. And I wanna just say at the very beginning of this, if you are with somebody or in a situation where somebody is having mental illness, call 911. In some states, there's a number 988, is trying to get adopted everywhere, as an emergency hotline for somebody with mental illness. Very important that if you find somebody who is suffering with mental illness, that you call and get help immediately for you and really for them as well. National statistics say that in the year 2021, over 57 million people suffered in the United States from some sort of substance abuse problem. That's one in five Americans. Guys, this number is absolutely incredible. The reason I wanted to talk about it in this video is because you've heard me say over and over again in all of my videos, whenever I'm talking about estate planning, that I truly believe the most important thing is incapacity planning. What do you want to happen if you were to become disabled? Everybody thinks about estate planning as what happens after they die. Who gets their stuff, right? Who gets their money, the house, the cars, all of that. But what's even more important is what happens if you are still alive and you are incapacitated. If you have a mental illness, if you have a substance abuse problem, who is going to take care of you? What plan do you have in place for your care? If you're married, what kind of a plan do you and your spouse have for caring for each other if something were to happen to one of you. What are the consequences of not having an incapacity plan in place? Well, first, you are creating a huge problem for your family and for your friends. We are seeing more and more people come into our office who are friends of somebody because the person who is suffering from either mental illness, uh, substance abuse, whatever the mental issue is, they don't have family either locally or they don't have family anymore. Maybe all of their kids have moved away. Maybe their spouse has passed away. And so they are truly alone. So what is a consequence of not having an incapacity plan? Well, that person, whoever it is, whether it's a family member or a friend, somebody is going to have to step up and step up big. And they're going to have to go and get a guardianship. And what does that mean? That means that they are going to have to go to the courthouse, meet with a judge that they've never met before. I will say guardianship judges are extremely well-trained. They know what they're doing. They're great people. But still, it's scary for a relative to have to go down and talk to a judge and tell the judge why they need a guardianship over this person because they no longer have capacity or they're having a substance abuse problem. I think that guardianships are like living probates. When somebody dies, you have to probate their estate. But a lot of times the probate comes several months or even a year or so after the person has passed away. You still feel grief, but that, that huge, that initial hit of grief is gone. In a guardianship, the person is still alive. The person who you may have gone on vacation with, who you saw at family dinners, who you'd have lunches with, dinners with, you had a relationship with this person and they're not there anymore, whether it's because of substance abuse or mental illness, that can be very, very difficult for the family member or the friend who is having to deal with that, having to still communicate with this person on a daily basis because obviously they still love them, they want to take care of them, but they're having to go in front of a judge and ask the judge for permission to have complete control over this person. And a lot of times the person doesn't want to. They're going to say absolutely no. They're going to say they want to still keep driving their car. They're going to say they still want to live at their house. They want to still live an independent life. And that's, that's human nature. That is why I think guardianships can be so difficult for family and friends because somebody has to step up and make those decisions and be the bad guys sometimes times, but in reality, you're the one that's actually saving them and getting them the help that they need. Other consequences of not having an incapacity plan? Well, along with the guardianship is the guardianship is expensive. It is not a cheap process. You have to usually hire an attorney. You may have to get background checks run. You're going to have to outlay a certain amount of money up front to pay all these costs, court costs, retainer fees for the attorneys, travel fees, and none of that's cheap. You'd be very lucky if you have somebody in your family who will step up and front all of those costs because it is expensive unfortunately in our state probates run about four to seven thousand dollars start to finish guardianships like I said are very similar to a probate so they're not much different in those costs and then you have to do an annual report every single year you have to go before the judge every single year and give them an annual report an annual of an accounting of first what are the finances and what's the health status of the person who you have control over so that's another big consequence for the person who actually gets the guardianship is they have a lot of work ahead of them in taking care of this person.
Another consequence of not having an incapacity plan is that, well, you don't have anybody to care for you or your family is, for whatever reason, fed up with the person and they don't do anything. They let the person continue to be out on the street. They let the person continue to live by themselves in danger of maybe leaving the gas stove on or, or falling downstairs. They let the person continue to drive their car, putting not only themselves, but the public in danger. That's a huge consequence of not having an incapacity plan as well because nobody wants to do anything to help that person. Another consequence of not having an incapacity plan is paying bills. A lot of times when people come in and need to get a guardianship over somebody, a lot of times they haven't paid the mortgage in three, four, five, six months. They haven't paid their utility bills. They haven't paid their credit card bills. They are literally behind on life because that is something that they just they don't realize that they are doing or not doing anymore. And a lot of times there's just no money because they've spent it on things that they don't even know that they spent it on. And so that can be a huge consequence and a huge problem when somebody starts to have mental illness or mental disability and nobody is there to care for them and there's no incapacity plan in place. What do you do if somebody is having substance abuse problem, mental incapacity? Well, we're not experts. We come in when somebody needs a guardianship so that they can have the authority to do the right thing. But we always guide people to talk to their primary care physician, talk to a neurologist. There's two categories of guardianships that we do on a regular basis. One is adult children who have substance abuse problems and we need to get them someplace uh, for rehabilitation or they have mental illness and we need to get them someplace for rehabilitation. And then on the other end of the spectrum is people who are elderly and just because of age or because of the way they live their life, they have started to develop mental incapacity and they've started to fall prey to to thieves calling on the phone and asking them for money. They usually start off with a little money, then they ask for more and more and more before it just gets out of control. We regularly see people come in where these telephone thieves have got all of their money disappearing on the first day of the month. So the person gets their social security check or they get their retirement check, let's say on the first of every month. And then on the second of every month, these thieves debit everything out of their account. So they're left with nothing. And so that's why they can't pay their mortgage. That's why they can't pay their utility bills. So what do you do? Talk to the professionals. Talk to medical personnel first to see what kind of help you need to get that person. Second, come see a estate planning probate guardianship attorney, you're going to have to probably most likely go down to the courthouse and get a guardianship process. Usually there's two ways you can go. If there's not an eminent threat of harm, so maybe you have secured this person in a memory care facility or assisted living, someplace where that you know they're going to be taken care of for a while and everything is stable, then we can usually go with what's just called a regular guardianship and that takes a few weeks between the time you file a petition for guardianship and the time you actually get to see a judge. There's other other cases, and this comes up a lot where, especially with adult children who are having substance abuse or mental illness, and we need to get them someplace immediately to get them their help. And when that happens, we will still file the regular petition for guardianship, but we will also go down to the judge usually that very day and ask the judge for permission to have an emergency guardianship of this person so that they can immediately take care of that person that they love and get them the care that they need. So that's usually the way the process works, at least in the state that we are. I'm sure it's not much different in other states. The bottom line is if you have somebody with mental illness or substance abuse problems, then call and get help. There are national hotlines set up where you can call national organizations that can give you resources and point you in the right direction. And if you need to go down and get a guardianship, like I said before, it's no fun, but a lot of times somebody in the family has to step up to take care of the person that everybody loves when they don't have an incapacity plan in place. That's why over and over in all of our videos, I say when you get your estate plan, make certain that you have a rock solid incapacity plan in place to take care of you and provide guidance for your family on how you want to be taken care of.